To call what's happening in Puerto Rico a humanitarian crisis is a severe understatement. She is an incredibly strong woman, and she tells me every day she not to worry about her. But the level of desperation is getting there. You know, people do not have, and you know, she's lucky that she lives in the greater metropolitan area, right? That it might be easier to get support. And I just think of everybody else that doesn't have that, right? But the, the sense of not having, you know, I came back home and I'm like, I can take a shower, right? And there's water available to me. And things that we just take for granted. And, um, you know, she's, our house was somewhat compromised, just so she doesn't feel safe being there right now. Uh, we have to figure that out, you know, and she's staying with some friends who happen to live, you know, in an 11th story building, and they don't have, like, nobody has electricity, right? So it's, it's challenging. That was New York City wow. Council Speaker Melissa Mark Viverito yesterday speaking about her mother who was in Puerto Rico where what's being called a humanitarian crisis is unfolding and happening right now in the wake of Hurricane Maria. Joining us now is Puerto Rico's Governor Ricardo Rosseo. Governor Rosseo, thank you so much for being with us this morning. Just if you could right now an update, a status report on where you are. How much available drinking water is there? How many hospitals are open up and running and what do you need right now? Well, we have uh, tw uh, 34 out of the 69 hospitals up and running. We have a logistical strategy to get the diesel. As you know, the whole power grid uh, went down in Puerto Rico, so we're having to do our turns. Uh, we have uh, about uh, 4 million liters of water that have been uh, hoisted into Puerto Rico, and we expect about 7.6 more uh, to be coming in. But really, our mm. biggest challenge has been the logistical assets to try to get uh, some of the food and some of the water to different areas of Puerto Rico. I can say that we've been working with FEMA closely so that we can uh, deploy those missions. And between yesterday and today, we've impacted at least 50 municipalities to get them food, water, and of course, uh, try to work with the diesel and uh, fuel distribution. So we're eight days now since Maria made landfall. There are remote areas of Puerto Rico and frankly, areas not so remote that haven't been able to get relief. What have you heard from those outlying areas and what do you need to get these logistics moving? We saw a video yesterday of ports in San Juan sitting trucks full of relief supplies that just can't get to where they need to go. Right, well, we need truck drivers, uh, you know, similar to everybody in Puerto Rico. Uh, a lot of the truck drivers got disconnected. Uh, so we're working with a, a, a lower level of human resource on that front. It's getting bigger. Uh, we've been able to make uh, uh, calls uh, by radio so that truck drivers can check in. Uh, it's increasing. Uh, we're working on the efficiency, but we've also asked the DOD to send some special uh, troops over here, uh, specifically for transportation, fuel deployment, uh, food deployment, uh, medical help, and engineering and, and so forth. Uh, so it, it is increasing and, and let me just say, we've been flying all across the island, uh, identifying those remote areas that you talk about, making sure we have <coughs> rescue missions. Uh, we've rescued over 5,500 people in the past uh, uh, eight days. So uh, there is an ongoing effort. Uh, food is being delivered and water. It's, uh, it, it has been a tough task and we want to get better at it, but certainly the food is here, uh, the water is here. We welcome more uh, help, but critically what we need is equipment. Uh, a human resource, whether it be National Guard, State Guard, and I have to say that uh, as, as, as in the case with the President, uh, governors have been phenomenal in responding to Puerto Rico, recognizing that this has been a disaster uh, like no other in our island. Two back-to-back uh, -back hurricanes, uh, Cat 4, Cat 5, passing through Puerto Rico, and a power grid completely lost, telecommunications down, and uh, the final uh, component that Puerto Rico, different to Florida or to Texas, uh, really has no neighboring states uh, that they can actually drive to there and give quick aid. We need to fly assets over here. We need to bring them by boat, and that's what has been a little bit of the bottleneck. So, Governor uh, Joe Scarborough here, uh, what would you say to your fellow? Americans that are watching you this morning. Um, what can they do uh, that would help you and the people that you represent uh, on the island the most? 
Well, well first of all, Joe, uh, recognize that we are American citizens and that we are proud American citizens. You know, Puerto Ricans have been serving the armed forces at a higher per capita rate than almost any state uh, in the nation for uh, the past 50, 50 years. As recent as uh, when Harvey hit Texas, we sent rescue teams over to Texas. Uh, when Irma hit the islands, we, uh, Puerto Rico became the incident support base and we supported uh, the shelter of about 4,000 U.S. citizens that didn't have food, uh, a place to stay. We rescued them, got them over here to Puerto Rico and uh, established a path forward to, to their original destination. So we're very proud uh, and what we are seeing right now is the biggest event of devastation in the modern history of Puerto Rico. Uh, it's a perfect storm, if you will. The grid is completely out. Obviously, a lot of things depend on, on energy. Uh, telecoms is, is down. Radio is mostly down uh, in the area. We are an island, so assets are harder to bring by. The air traffic is clogged, so uh, the, the quantity, the bandwidth of airplanes that's coming here is lower. So what we need is really all hands on deck, uh, and we make that plea. And let me, uh, let me state uh, that I recognize that this is a complex situation, uh, and what we want is everybody to be helping. I can say that uh, the president has been very diligent. He has been essentially uh, talking to us every day in the White House as well. Uh, governors uh, and senators have pledged their support. Uh, Governor Cuomo today uh, just sent his, his first contingency of state troopers and uh, National Guard. Uh, Governor uh, Christie just called me that he had th his contingency ready. And we have about other 13 states that are uh, collaborating as well. So our petition uh, right now is to help uh, with these assets that we need in the short, in the short term, uh, but also to make sure that uh, mm. in the aid package, Puerto Rico is considered equally, that we get the funding that's necessary to rebuild, that we get the flexibility because of Puerto Rico's fiscal situation. We're going to need some money to operate a government and, and to operate the emergency that we, quite frankly, don't have in the box, and uh, that we get a 100 percent waiver. The president signed a 100 percent waiver for six months, but this is going to be a, a long rebuilding process. Governor, Puerto Rico's governor, Ricardo Rosseo, thank you so much. We are thinking about you. We will stay on this story. Make sure you get the assets you need. It's a beautiful island. These are our yes. Puerto Rican brothers and sisters, American citizens, and we will take care of them and treat them as such. Governor, thank you so much. Thank you, and God bless. All right. Thanks for checking out MSNBC on YouTube, and make sure you subscribe to stay up to date on the day's biggest stories, and you can click on any of the videos around us to watch more for Morning Joe and MSNBC. Thanks so much for watching.